This month at the Packaging School, we studied carbon. And to reflect on these learnings, I want you to participate with me right now. Breathe in and breathe out all that CO2 and greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. Many public companies have set aggressive sustainability targets, most of which involve packaging. Now, more than ever, product companies are investing in reducing the environmental impacts of their packaging and communicating these efforts on their labels. A major component to understanding your environmental impact is the amount of production and discharge of carbon. So many companies are asking the question, how do we make carbon neutral packaging? So by the end of this short lesson, you're going to be able to define carbon neutrality, examine carbon credits and offsets, summarize carbon trading, discuss examples of carbon offset in the industry. Since everyone is not familiar with the term carbon neutrality, let's start with a definition. Carbon neutrality refers to a net zero carbon footprint. Sounds simple enough, but let's take that one step further. According to the European Parliament, carbon neutrality is reached when the same amount of carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere as is removed, in turn, leaving a zero balance. For all of us in the packaging industry, how does this apply and how do we package our products in a way that is carbon neutral? Carbon neutral packaging is achieved when carbon emissions have been calculated, reduced, and then subsequently offset. So how do we achieve the goal of carbon neutrality? Today, we have what is known as carbon markets. These allow corporations to trade carbon credits and carbon offsets at the same time, basically turning carbon dioxide emissions into a commodity by giving it a value. One carbon credit permits the emission of one metric ton of carbon dioxide, or the equivalent in other greenhouse gases. This can also be defined as a carbon dioxide equivalent, or CO2e, meaning the number of metric tons of CO2 emissions with the same global warming potential as one metric ton of other greenhouse gas. And like any other trading system, when companies end up with excess credits by doing things like planting trees, where depending on the tree, 31 to 46 trees can offset one metric ton of CO2 annually. The credits can be sold to other companies as well. Offsets are a bit more tricky. When a company works to remove a unit of carbon from the atmosphere as part of a corporate strategy, they generate a carbon offset. So let's put some value to this explanation. What's the cost that we can understand here? According to GreenBiz, Carbon offset prices currently stand at three to five US dollars per metric ton of carbon dioxide. However, experts fear a tenfold increase in the next decade as businesses adapt to net zero targets. And to put that into perspective, what a metric ton of carbon dioxide looks like, think of it in terms of a common everyday thing, driving. According to NASA, at standard temperature and pressure, one metric ton of carbon dioxide would fill a sphere that is 32 feet in diameter. You know, for perspective, the average car in the US produces this in a three month period. Companies who generate more carbon than they offset can invest in carbon reduction projects, which are seen as a specific activity that act to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. This credit system creates a monetary incentive for companies while helping them practice corporate social responsibility. Let's take a quick look at some examples of carbon offsets. According to MIT researchers at the Joint Program on the Science and Policy of Global Change, common projects include reforestation, investing in renewable energy, carbon storing agricultural practices, and waste and landfill management. So in order to issue carbon offsets, a project needs to prove it actually reduces emissions. 
And to do this requires accurate measurement of the carbon dioxide being kept out of the atmosphere and well-documented standards and protocols. So participation in this government-issued allowance of carbon credits is also limited to companies in areas with an emission trading scheme. So currently, only the following countries, states, and territories have this type of program available. We also need to understand that carbon offsets are traded on the voluntary market and do not fall under an existing government regulation. So how does one access the world's carbon markets? Like any stock exchange, buying and selling carbon credits is a simple process run through a number of platforms that allows online and instant trading 24 seven. For example, the Carbon Trade Exchange is a global electronic exchange targeted at the voluntary carbon market, acting to trade millions of tons of CO2. Other voluntary platforms where carbon credits and offsets can be traded can be found here. So please note, like any market, the value of these credits fluctuate based on various factors such as supply and demand and even project type. Think about carbon in a way that you need to understand how much you emit. And if you have a surplus of carbon, you need to understand ways to mitigate that carbon if you want to achieve carbon neutrality. So we hope we gave you a quick overview of the basics of carbon neutrality. But we're not stopping here. Stay tuned for the next segment where we're going to continue this conversation and cover real-world applications. Can't wait to see you there.